All right, so here at Clover Park, speech number four is the one and only persuasive speech that you're going to be doing. At other colleges, usually, especially in community colleges, where they're trying to help people transfer to four-year institutions, where they might actually major in communication as a field of study, they would go into great length, great detail on a persuasive speech. They would talk about the history of persuasion, starting with Aristotle, and then they would talk about great persuasive speakers of the past, they would talk about rhetoric, they would talk about critical thinking, they would talk about logic and reasoning and syllogisms and drawing inferences, inductive and deductive logic, all these kinds of things. They might even give you an exact paradigm, an exact form to, for, to follow in a persuasive speech, such as Monroe's motivated sequence. This might take five or six weeks. At Highline Community College, for instance, they go through a very rigorous process in which students go online, prepare an outline, they common, comment on each other's outlines, they revise them, and then finally, at the very culmination of all this, after four weeks or so, they actually give their, their persuasive speeches. The topics that they use in many other colleges would not have too much to do necessarily with your own lives. They would be things like political topics, social issues, international things, things in which lots of people in our society might differ and which are momentous. They would require you to have perhaps 10 or 12 different citations and readings in order to do that. But this is a technical college in which none of you, I suppose, is going to go on to major in communication at Washington State University or the University of Washington or some other place. So my perspective has been in the past eight years that instead of giving you that kind of traditional persuasive speech task, I want you to have the opportunity to practice something that is persuasive that relates directly to your lives, which is finding a job. That's why we have the why you should hire me speech. It's not as long as your others because in a real job setting, you probably wouldn't be given a lot of time to make your case by yourself. But as you know, in this class, each of you, if we have four speakers, will speak for three to five minutes, saying why you should be hired. After that, those four of you will be seated over here. The rubric writers will assume the role of simulated job interviewers, and we'll have a panel interview. That part will not be graded, but we'll all have a chance to talk about what we thought of the person's answers. We'll probably be a little bit more rigorous, I don't want to say harsh, but a little bit more incisive in our reactions there than we would be in most of the speeches, because after all, the purpose of this is to prepare you through a challenge for the challenges you're going to have when you are in the job market. What questions do you have about the format? Okay. Ryan, why don't you go ahead and turn that off for a second?